Where your side finished in League One is completely academic. It's my rankings, my rankings that determine if you had a good season or a bad season. And it's certainly not because now League One's finished, I've got to try and milk some content. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give every team an arbitrary grade based on my very limited and sketchy knowledge. And you'll see, by the way, I breeze through this, the very sketchy and limited knowledge I have on each club. But nevertheless, this grade is important and you should see every single one of them. If you only want to see your club, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you, I'm going to do it in alphabetical order, so you can probably work out when I'm going to talk about your club. And also, I put timestamps down below, so you can just use that feature to jump to any point of the video. But if you do, the very least you can do is hit that like button, because that does help me out a lot. And if you do like the content, consider subscribing. So let's not delay it anymore. Let's get jumping right into this. We've got 24 sides to go through. Alphabetical order dictates me to start with Barnsley. So as you can see, the tier ranker is right here with all the clubs down the bottom. Uh, don't worry, Lincoln City fans, you are there. You're just a little bit cut off to the side, but you will appear after I've done the first club. But as we said, we are going to start with Barnsley. So the beaten playoff finalists from the 2022-23 season ended up beating in the playoffs again, but this time around in the semi-finals. With an unproven manager in Neil Collins and off-the-field issues, there were concerns that this could be a tricky season for the Tykes, but the Reds performed well for the most part of the season and they finished up in the playoffs, but they did flirt with automatic promotion at times as well. But around about the middle of March that is when results started to turn and by the end of April the wheels had well and truly blown off the Barnsley bus at the worst possible time. Neil Collins was sacked with a game to go and Barnsley limped into the playoffs and despite a good fight back in the second leg against Bolton that is where their season finished. So a tough one to grade. Barnsley fans probably would have accepted playoffs at the start of the season and whilst they were probably never really sold on Neil Collins, they would have been content with the majority of the season. But when it went wrong, my goodness, it went wrong. But overall, not a bad season for Barnsley, and they get a B. Blackpool are next and relegated from the championship the year before. Neil Critchley has returned, or did return, to Blackpool to hopefully rekindle some of the former magic for the Tangerines. The Seasiders had a solid season and they were in and around the playoff picture all season, but unfortunately they were never able to secure that playoff place. They did take it to the final day, but ultimately missed out and finished in eighth place. Their home form was incredible. They only lost three times at Bloomfield Road, but it was on the road where Blackpool lacked consistency and struggled to score goals and it's what cost them any realistic chances of promotion. I do feel there is a lot to be positive though for Blackpool fans for next season. So Critchley's built a solid side with a decent defence and if they can add some firepower then they could be a dangerous side next season. But as for this season, it's pretty steady Eddie and Blackpool We'll get a C. Let's have a look at Bolton Wanderers and oh geez I, I don't really know how I'm going to do this without sounding like a smug git at times. They were beaten in the semi-finals of the playoffs in 2022-23 and Bolton set their sights on promotion once again. They did get a step further but ultimately they were beaten in the playoff final by Oxford United. <laughs> No, 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 no. We're not doing any of that. Look, Ian Everts trotters, they kept a solid base from the year before and they added more firepower. And that did look like it would be a recipe for success. Wanderers pushed for automatic promotion pretty much all season. And at times, they looked a class above the rest. But Bolton could never turn good form into great form and had far too many off days, far too many disappointing draws and losses. And that would just relieve the pressure on the likes of Portsmouth, on the likes of Derby and it meant they had to settle for the lottery of the playoffs. They did enough against Barnsley to get through but ultimately they came up against an Oxford side that put in an inspired performance and Bolton fell at the final hurdle. Um, for whatever reason Bolton just didn't carry any good form into the playoffs but it was still a good season for Bolton overall and I do believe that in Ian Everett and I think that he continues to improve as a manager and has continued to improve Bolton year on year so should be given another chance. He's not perfect but it's never going to be perfect in League One. Bolton have still had a good season and Bolton get an A. 
From a good to the bad and a little bit of ugly, because it's time for Bristol Rovers. And as I just said, what an ugly season for the Gasheads. They started the season under Joey Barton, thinking about a playoff push. They ended it under Matt Taylor, worried about their League One survival hopes for next year. Barton was very inconsistent in the early part of the season. And when he publicly humiliated Luke Thomas, he didn't last much longer. Uh, Rovers have got a good boss in, though, in Matt Taylor. But Taylor's failed to breathe any life into the Pirates and they just kind of meandered along with very very few hope spots and it ended up with a 15th place finish but it has gotten the fans very nervous about what lies ahead. Joey Barton was wrong with what he said about Luke Thomas but the fact that Ty Taylor's not been able to come in and turn things around does point to attitude problems within the squad and with some of the players that they will need to sort out. It's been a horrible year for Bristol Rovers and they get the lowest grade. They get an F. <laughs> Moving on to Burton Albion. The Brewers survived and that is what they needed to do. Was it a good season? No. Very much a side that is going round in a cycle. A manager that kept the club up last season, Dino Marmria, and I thought he did a remarkable job, by the way, but he struggled this season. The club got nervous, they sacked him, and they bring in a new manager hoping for that bounce. And Burton just about got away with it this season. But I don't really see how Martin Patterson has made any improvements over what they had with Dino Marmria. But ultimately... Burton stayed up, and that was their objective. And because of that, Burton Albion get a C. Time for Cambridge United, and I thought Cambridge United would go down this season. So the fact that they have survived means that it was a relative success. But crikey! It was far from plain sailing. They've had three managers over the course of the year and it ended up with an 18th place finish. The U's did lose some key players over the summer, but they still had Mark Bonner, who had done a fantastic job despite the limitations with Cambridge and they were always a tough side to play against, especially at the Abbey Stadium. But Mark Bonner was sacked at the end of no November and he was replaced by Neil Harris. I think that was a great appointment. Um, but Harris very quickly jumped back to Millwall at the first opportunity. And you might think that is a little bit snaky. But Neil Harris has such strong ties with, with the Lions, you can't really blame him for doing it. So then Cambridge plucked Gary Monk seemingly out of the ether. And he just about steered them clear of relegation. So a season of upheaval and at the end of the day, would Cambridge have done any worse if they just kept faith in Mark Bonner? Who knows? But again, like Burton, ultimately their aim was survival, and that is what they did. So Cambridge also get a C. Carlisle might begin with a C, but it's certainly not going to get a C as a grade. That is for sure, because stating the bloody obvious, it was a poor year for Carlisle. The Cumbrians finished rock bottom and only registered seven wins all season. But the strange thing is, I saw Carlisle a few times this season and actually thought that they looked a pretty decent side and are a better football inside than some of the others down the bottom. But they struggled. They struggled to score goals and where they really struggled was at the back. As soon as sides would put pressure on them, they would ultimately fold. And as soon as they went a goal down, you just figured that they would never come back. But I am pleased to see that they've kept hold of Paul Simpson. Uh, would have been very tempting to sack him, but they've kept hold of Simpson, and I think that bodes well for next season. So fingers crossed, Carlisle fans, that you will have more success in League 2. But this was a bit of a mare of a season in League 1, and one that you will want to forget. And you join Bristol Rovers in that bottom tier. You get an F. Oh boy, it's another train wreck and it is Charlton Athletic. Worked with some excellent summer signings. There were high hopes for the Addicts for this season. But three managers and 18 game winless run during the season meant that they had to settle with a 16th place finish. It was an incredibly frustrating season. Some people, like this idiot here, had high hopes for them and actually tipped them for promotion. Dean Holden was given about a month before he was fired a defeat to Oxford, I might add. Then Michael Appleton, who was an unpopular choice when he came in, did a terrible job and seemingly got more unpopular every single week and he was fired in January. Nathan Jones had to pick up the pieces 
and added some respectability to this Charlton season and certainly made them hard to beat. But Charlton, to be fair to them, had a lot of problems with injuries. But out of the signings that they made, it was only really Alfie May that paid off. And boy, did it pay off. And where would they have been without his 23 goals? Charlton needs stability next season. And I hope that they do find it under Nathan Jones because this one was a terrible one from their point of view. They don't get the bottom grade, but they do get... A D. Look at that, I had to add a new rank just for Charlton. I, I certainly didn't forget to put that in when the video started. Cheltenham Town are next and I did expect the Robins to go down this season and although they eventually did, they did put up a darn good fight. Let's have a look at that start of the season. 11 games in, they had one point and they'd scored no goals. It's not surprising that Wade Elliott lost his job. And he was replaced by Daryl Clark, who did superbly. Clark gave Cheltenham a backbone. He gave them some fight and they took it all the way to the final day of the season. But unfortunately, ultimately, they did go down. They were one of the few sides that got a win over Portsmouth. And in fact, they took four points off Pompey, which is probably more than anybody else. But they still went down, so they don't get the bottom grade and they do get my newly found grade that I certainly didn't forget to put in. Cheltenham, get a D. <laughs> From the bottom of League One to near the top of League One, because Derby County are next. And there was a lot of expectation on Derby to get promotion this season. And Paul Warren's Rams achieved it. It was a sticky start, though, under Paul Warren this season. He was under severe pressure at the end of October. But credit to Derby and credit to Warren because he turned it around. Another little wobble came at the end of February, but after back-to-back -back defeats, Derby were clutch in the run-in, winning 8 of the final 11 games. All the hallmarks of poor worn sides are there. Rock solid at the back, physically imposing and dangerous from set pieces. But poor worn sides have struggled in the championship and it's not normally a place where he does particularly well. So it'll be interesting to see how far he can take Derby County. But as for this season, Derby were rock solid and it was only an excellent Portsmouth side that stopped them from winning the league. But, but a great season for Derby County. Not not too much more to say, but a great promotion, and they get the top grade. The first side to get it, Derby, get an S. Exeter City, let's have a strong start, an iffy middle, and a very strong end. That is the cliff notes of the Grecian season. But Gary Coldwell should be very pleased with the job he's done, guiding Exeter City to 13th place this season. They were very good side to watch and as I say pleasing on the eye and there's a lot to be excited about for next season for Exeter fans if they can tighten things up at the back and add a little bit more punch then they could be a dark horse for challenging for the playoffs but Exeter's run in was very impressive where they won six of the last nine games and only lost on the final day of the season. That was to Oxford, and it was a crucial one to Oxford because it got us into the playoffs. But let's not dwell on that. We're talking about Exeter here. Look, as I said, it could be a dark horse for challenging for the playoffs next season. But as for this season, it was a very strong one. And Exeter City get a B. Back down the bottom of the league and we go to Fleetwood Town. And for so many seasons, Fleetwood have been punching above their weight in League One. But for this season, unfortunately, the fight left them. Another club who had three managers over the course of the season. Scott Brown started it and he'd done well in his debut season the year before. But a terrible start to the season saw him replaced by Lee Johnson. Not always the most inspiring choice, but Johnson steadied things initially, but then the form fell away in December and he was sacked just before New Year. That left Charlie Adams to have a go. Charlie Adam to have a go, sorry. And he certainly made Fleetwood harder to beat. And there were a lot of draws in there for Fleetwood and a decent unbeaten run, but they just couldn't turn those draws into wins and the Cod Army finished three points adrift of safety despite winning three of the last four games so it will be a rebuild job for Fleetwood next season and there are fans that are worried that they could do a bit of a forest green and slide down back to the National League but I don't expect that to happen although this season was a horrible mess and Fleetwood get an F
Leighton Orient, their first season back in League One. And it was a very good season back for the O's. Richie Wells doing a tremendous job. At times they flirted with the playoffs, but an 11th place finish is very commendable. Rock solid side that could be dangerous in transition, but they're also prepared to mix it up when needed. And a 3-0 away win over Portsmouth is arguably the greatest performance of anybody this season. A lot to build on and a lot to look forward to for next season for Leighton Orient fans. And not too much really more to say because it's just been a good solid season and Leighton Orient get a B. Lincoln City is very much a tale of two years for the Imps. The 2023 part of their season was average at best, which saw them limping or imping along what a great joke there well done ian but mark kennedy was fired in october and michael scabala came in and things didn't change immediately for scabala and it wasn't until after new year's day that lincoln bought in 2024 and after that point lincoln were quite simply fantastic lincoln only lost three games in 2024 and they roared into playoff contention only to see it taken away on the final day four behind to this michael scabala side and you basically lost the game they were virtually impregnable at the back and defended solidly as a team if they would have got into the playoffs i think they would have had a really good chance of winning them but they do need to add a little bit more firepower and if they can do that then they'll be a really really threatening side next season but lincoln city this season get a b Northampton are next and not a lot to say about Northampton. Very similar to Leighton Orient. It's been a very good return to League One for the Cobblers. John Brady's side were never in any doubt of going down. There was a couple of times where they did kind of flirt with playoff contention. But they did dip in towards the end of the season. Maybe knowing that they were safe, they kind of went into um, sort of on the beach. I hate using that term. On the beach mode seemingly quite early on. And they ended up kind of slipping to fall. 14th place not really too much more to say but just say it's been a solid year it's what they would have wanted coming into it and they achieved it so Northampton Town very commendable B grade now we have a club we can talk about ad nauseum because it's time for Oxford United look I still can't believe it. What a season it's been for Oxford United. It felt crazy and wild, and that was even before the playoffs started. Let's go back to the start, and after nearly getting relegated last season, the season started really well under Liam Manning, and the Yellows were challenging near the top of the league. But Manning buggered off quite shockingly and surprisingly to Bristol City around about November, and Oxford turned to largely unknown local lad Des Buckingham to fill his shoes. However, Buckingham floundered whilst finding his feet and also trying to kind of stick to Manning way of doing things that had worked well before he got there. And Oxford sort of slid down the table out of automatic contention and started to slide out of playoff contention. And everything came to a head where it looked like season over after a humiliating 5-0 defeat to Bolton Wanderers. But in many ways, Manning Ball died that night at Bolton and Buckingham Ball was reborn out of the ashes. All of a sudden, Oxford looked like a new team. They looked sharp going forward and more importantly, very determined and solid at the back. But fortune was with the U's on the final day of the season and results went their way for us to get into the playoffs. And then they withstood the siege of Peterborough in the semi-final second leg, uh, which gave us a Wembley showdown with the side that beat us 5-0 in March against Bolton. And Oxford, quite simply, were brilliant saving arguably the best performance of the season for when it mattered the most an amazing day at Wembley promotion for Oxford United and a return to the championship for the first time in 25 years of course I'm giving Oxford an S Now a side that Oxford beat in the semi-finals and that is Peterborough United. Another very strong season from the posh saw Darren Ferguson once again lead his men into the playoffs. But once again, it ended in semi-final heartbreak. Peterborough were excellent this season. They blew so many sides away with their attacking play, particularly at London Road. And they ended up being the top scorers in League One. 
They were in the mix for automatic promotion for most of the season and they won the EFL trophy in April. But Posh just had too many silly off days like what Bolton did and just too many freak results which didn't really allow them to sustain an automatic promotion push and they had to settle for the playoffs and luck was not with posh once again in the playoffs last season it was the implosion at Hillsborough and this time they laid siege on the Oxford goal for virtually the entire second leg but it was one of those days where the ball just would not go in for them and Oxford survived Silly fine margins made it quite a cruel season in the end, but Peterborough have had a great season. I've no reason to think they won't have a great season next year as well. Peterborough get an A grade. But move out of the way, everybody, because it's time to talk about the champions, and that is Portsmouth. And this might be a short entry, because what can you say? Virtually a perfect season for Pompey. Not getting 100 points is their only negative. So if that's the case, I think it's fair to say John Massinio, yeah, he's doing all right. HMS Piss the League was pretty much docked at Portsmouth Harbour for seemingly the whole season. Messinio assembled an excellent squad who have been unbelievably consistent this season. The biggest compliment is Portsmouth's desire to find a way to win games and to find a way just simply refusing to lose matches as well. Just five defeats all season epitomises this. There were so many games where Pompey would get a late goal or nick a tight game. It just made them ultimately the best team in the league. On a side note, thanks for also for not taking your foot off the gas in that final day of the season against Lincoln. That helped Oxford out a lot. Brilliant, marvellous, exceptional. Portsmouth deserve all the praise in the world for the season they've had. And of course, they get the top grade. Pompey joined Derby and Oxford with an S. The highs of Portsmouth are followed by the lows of Port Vale and a horrible season, a miserable season for the Valiants. It actually started really well under Andy Crosby. Vale won five of the first seven games and were flying high, but then reality hit and Port Vale plummeted and only won five games in the remaining 39 games of the season, which is 25 points overall from a possible 117. Yeah, not great. Not surprising that Andy Crosby was sacked in February and he was replaced by Darren Moore. Bit of a coup to get Darren Moore. A good manager who won promotion last season, but he couldn't turn the Valiant's fortunes around and in the end, Vale ended up finishing in 23rd place. A big rebuild job for, for Darren Moore next season if he stays. And uh, Port Vale will definitely be hoping they can consolidate in League 2 because this was a horrible year for them. One they'll want to forget and they get the bottom grade. Port Vale get an F. The lesser half of the Thames Valley Royals are up next and that is Reading. And off the field, it's an understatement to say Reading have had a tough year. Points deduction, six in total and an owner who wants out and doesn't want to pay anyone on the way out either. Threatened to throw the whole club into jeopardy. Yes, for Reading, uh, it wasn't so much about winning games on the field. It was about staying in existence for times this season. Um, not a huge squad, but certainly a squad that had quality. And through all the gloom of the off-field shenanigans. Ruben Sellers is a superb manager and he's done a stellar job with the Royals. The Reading side were tough to beat, especially at home, and they ended up with a very respectable 17th place. If Reading can keep Sellers and, more importantly, get new owners and get all this financial strife behind them, then things could be very good for the Royals next season. But Sellers did a good job on the field and it could have easily gone a lot worse for Reading this season. And Reading get a C. A side that struggled in League One were Shrewsbury Town. I always thought they would struggle this season, so staying up, I guess, is a pretty decent effort. Matt Taylor, not the ex-Oxford striker Matt Taylor and not the chap that's now managing Bristol Rovers, another Matt Taylor. There's a lot of Matt Taylors, but he 
was the manager at the start of the season. He had a big job on his hands taking over from Steve Cottrell. Never an exciting side, but Shrewsbury still had that solid base and they were able to just pick up enough wins and points to keep their head above water in 19th place. Taylor was sacked at the end of January, maybe harshly so, and he was replaced by Paul Hurst, who I don't really think had much of an impact. Scoring goals was the hugest problem for Shrewsbury as they only scored 35 over the whole season but they did enough and they survived but this club has gone backwards after getting rid of Cottrell and it nearly cost them their league one status when you're boring the fans on the field and making them worried and anxious as well it's not a great mix and Shrewsbury get a D <laughs> Now it's Stevenage, and Stevenage did the best out of all the promoted sides. Steve Evans assembled a very combative squad that was pro pushing for promotion for pretty much all of the season. Unapologetic in their style, they were always a hard side to play against, always put you under pressure by almost bombarding your penalty area with balls into the box. But it was only really in the last month of the season where they finally ran out of steam. But they don't have Evans anymore as he jumped ship to Rotherham quite surprisingly with only a couple of games to go and I do wonder if they will struggle now Evans has departed but ninth place is an excellent finish for a Stevenage side that I thought would go down this season so it shows what a stupid prediction that was but it's also a side that not too long ago was struggling down the foot of League 2 so to get them ninth is fantastic and Stevenage get an A. Wigan Athletic and like Reading had a lot of off-field problems, an eight-point deduction at the start of the season. But despite that, Sean Maloney guided the Latics to 12th place. Very good side to watch, Wigan. Good in possession, excellent on the counter-attack, and Wigan scored some big wins over a lot of the big hitters in League One, including Portsmouth, Derby, Oxford, and they did the double over Bolton. This season would have been about consolidation for Wigan, no doubt about it, and now they've got that points deduction out of the way and had a relatively comfortable season in mid-table. They'll be looking forward to next season, and I do feel that this Wigan side could be dangerous and should challenge for promotion but this season they've done really well and Sean Maloney's side deserve a B and bringing up the rear is Wickham Wanderers last and therefore least and that's a joke I'm going to run with forever well maybe not because I can't talk about them next season but it's been an up and down season for the chair boys as they got used to life after Gareth Ainsworth. Matt Bloomfield certainly had his struggles this season and at times Wickham nearly got sucked into a relegation battle but credit to Wickham, they stuck with Bloomfield and he turned things around and they, they ended the season brilliantly and saw them climb into 10th place. They also had a day out at Wembley where all 300 of Wickham's fans turned up to cheer them on but only two defeat in the EFL Trophy Final where they lost 2-1 to Peterborough but Wickham by the end of the season looked much more like their old selves and I do feel that next season could be a season where they are once again challenging at the right end of the table and could be an outside bet for getting into the playoffs. So a lot to look forward to for Wickham fans and steady in the end for this season and Wickham get a C. So there we have it, League One fans. That is the tier ranker completed. Um, what does it mean? Well, not a lot. It's just my two P's worth. Let me know your comments down below. I'm sure you'll have different views on your club than I did. But also let me know how you think your club's going to do next season in what looks to be a very difficult League One. And from an Oxford point of view, quite feel quite fortunate to be out of that race also tell me about your highs and lows of this season it'll be interesting for me to read through it and and on a personal note thank you for all the support that people have given me over the course of the year yes I've got my fans that are Oxford fans that support this channel but I have fans from pretty much all of the clubs over the EFL that leave their comments leave their support and uh, tell me what a 
de all round decent chap I am, which I really just have a hard time believing. But thank you very much. If you can like this video, uh, that would be great. If you can su subscribe, that would be great. That's pretty much does it for the League One content for next season. Uh, I might do a little bit for the Euros and I might do a review of Oxford season. But other than that, I'll be back next season to talk about life in the championship.